In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the BenQ 4K 32-inch monitor, the EW327U. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The unboxing and setup experience was pretty straightforward. In the box, you'll get the monitor, the stand that comes in two pieces, which is easily put together, a Type-C cable, a mini display for the display port, and a power cable. It would have been nice to see at least either a full-size standard HDMI or DisplayPort cables included, since the included cable selection feels like it was more tailored towards laptop users. Looking at the display itself, it strikes a nice balance. It neither looks too industrial nor too flashy. The edges are slightly rounded, and the outer frame is angled inwards, which not only helps clean up the overall look, but it also helps by keeping the edges in view when looking at things at an angle. On the bottom, we'll find the BenQ logo as well as an HDR badge with a button right below it. That activates several feature combinations, one being HDR, and the other activating the eye care light sensor that can be found below the display itself. Under the monitor is where you'll find the power and navigation buttons, as well as the built-in stereo bottom firing speakers. The overall footprint is pretty small, and there's an angled platform to place your laptop on, and a glossy finish for the main structure, which is going to be filled up with dust real quick. As for adjustments, tilt is the only adjustment that can be found. No height or rotation options. Other than that, a vase amount option is present and the included stand is sturdy, so that's kind of going for it. Personally, I don't find that to be a big of an issue since the display is already large enough and can be easily viewed at an eye level, but at the same time, there are others who can make use of it, and it would be nice to have one at this price point. Lastly, moving on to the back, you'll find a generous amount of ports. Two HDMI 2.0s, a single DisplayPort 1.4, a Type-C port, as well as a 3.5mm audio pass-through port which is very handy if you plan to use a dedicated set of speakers with a console. And yes, it is HDCP 2.2 compliant. Now moving on to the panel, it's got 32 inches worth of 4K running on a VA panel that provides deep blacks and clean whites with 4 milliseconds of grey to grey response times. It covers 95% of DCI-P3 white color gamut with a side of 10-bit HDR and FreeSync, all running at 60Hz. While being a VA panel, it will of course not provide you with anything close to that sweet 99% RSRGB color accuracy. But for the majority of people, this is perfectly fine for things like YouTube content creation and general use. The maximum brightness I was able to measure with my i1 Display Pro was 275 nits around the center of the display. As for brightness uniformity, it suffers a bit and it's mostly noticeable when looking at a flat gray colored background. What you see here is called VA Glow and it's quite common on VA panels, especially large ones. Out of the box, the colors are a bit on the bluish side, but with a bit of adjustments in the menus, things will appear a lot better. The on-screen menu is fairly easy to navigate and everything is where you expect it to be, and there's not a whole lot to complain about. Now, if you're a content creator, there are a couple of useful color profiles, such as sRGB and Rack 709. With all that being said, after some calibration, everything looks much better in terms of color accuracy. Which brings us to HDR, and if you don't already know, it tends to be hit or miss depending on a lot of factors, such as maximum brightness, panel type, content type, and adjustments, HDR is pretty much all over the place. In this case, the biggest argument that can be made against HDR in this display would be not having enough brightness and not really being able to adjust how your HDR looks when activated. Once it activates, there's nothing you can change about it. Each piece of content or game for the most part was tested and adjusted in studio on a limited selection of HDR TVs and monitors. In my case, when watching some 4K HDR Spider-Man gameplay on YouTube, in some areas things just look a bit too dark. But when I'm playing games like Forza Horizon 4, Destiny 2, and Call of Duty Black Ops 4, things look nice and even. Now at first it may not look like there's a big difference when activating HDR versus SDR, but when it does work, things pop out a bit more, lights look more realistic, and overall there's a subtle difference that adds a whole lot to your gameplay experience. This display will work on both Windows 10 PCs with supported graphics cards and supported consoles. Now if you don't have HDR supported content or machine, then you can enable the emulated HDR option by pressing the button right below the HDR badge. The emulated HDR function is pretty bad and I would recommend not using it since it tends to make everything flat and bluish. This button will cycle through four different options mixed between HDR and the iCare sensor and having both of them deactivated. The iCare option on the other hand is very useful and unlike the emulated HDR option, it does give you some control on how you want it to look and how much sensitivity there is. Overall, I wish more displays had something like this. Being a 4K monitor, you start asking yourself at what size can you really fully utilize the screen real estate with windows scaling set to 100%. 32 inches gets pretty damn close to being the sweet spot. At 100% for the most part, you can comfortably use all the screen real estate and have multiple windows open without being cramped. In each corner, you can have 100% scaled 1080p window open with ease. I was able to comfortably have two windows open side by side, both scaled perfectly and comfortably without having anything cut or squished. And that is great. The built-in speakers are your usual monitor speakers. As always, even a cheap pair of dedicated speakers will sound better, so here's a sample.
Now when it comes to gaming, I was pleasantly surprised that the game experience wasn't as bad as I thought. At least when I'm getting the right frames. Again, I'm coming from a high-end gaming monitor with all the bells and whistles. First of all, of course, you'll need a powerful PC to run all of this. At least a 980 Ti and running on the lowest possible settings. With 100% scaling, of course. So in order to test this monitor, I have taken my main PC and plop it down on my testing desk for a month. At the same time, I swapped in my test PC a couple times, which I loaded with an RX 570 to see if I can experience or even get FreeSync running. I didn't. For some reason, I was never able to get FreeSync working for me. That said, FreeSync itself isn't perfect, and it can be hit or miss depending on what kind of hardware combination you have. Side-scrolling games were enjoyable, and games like Total Warhammer 2 were great when you're not lagging, and pretty much the same goes for Black Ops 4, which tends to be very GPU-intensive. CSGO plays fine, just as it would on a standard 60Hz monitor with decent response times, GTA 5 looks great as well with lots of detail and feels like you're kinda there, and Overwatch is enjoyable, but just make sure you have either VSync enabled or have enough horsepower. Destiny 2 runs flawlessly again with HDR and it looks pretty great. Forza Horizon 4, same story, you'll need to drop the settings a bit to get consistent frame rates, but for the most part, the game looks absolutely gorgeous. Then I ran Star Citizen and I was just blown away. The game looks absolutely stunning, the amount of detail in this game can only be truly appreciated on 4K and preferably probably 32 inches. Outer space looks breathtaking and indoor neon lights shine as if you're in the game. And overall the game here is pretty much like Crisis, but better on a universal scale. And for any casual gamepad game, you can just sit back, relax, and enjoy some games on 32 inches. Now if you're wondering about response time, rest assured that this panel can keep up as good as a non-dedicated gaming panel can get. As for ghosting, I have AMA enabled, and it does a great job, actually a fantastic job at keeping ghosting to a minimum. Overall, not a bad panel at all to play games on, and even though I don't have a proper way to test the panel responsiveness, I can tell you that it is very responsive, at least from my experience. And so the last thing to talk about here before we go ahead and conclude the video would be editing photos and videos. Overall, as I have mentioned before, there's a lot of screen space to work with, and thanks to the resolution, I can have a real full 1080p preview window in my editing workspace. Photo editing is just as expected, you can see a lot of detail without having to zoom in, and if you zoom in, you got even more detail. And if you are wondering, I have written this whole script on this display as well as editing it. So finally, the conclusion. My time with this display has been, for the most part, pretty great. The display looks great, the overall design is classy, and it is pretty awesome for gaming, entertainment, and video consumption. And once again, the black levels are pretty fantastic compared to a lot of panels I have experienced before. And that's all thanks to the 3000 to 1 contrast ratios. So with all that being said, as someone who uses a dual monitor setup with one of them being a decked out gaming panel, would I be happy using this monitor? I would say most definitely yes, as long as it can run the panel properly with a proper GPU. Even with my 1080 Ti, it would struggle to run some games at the frames and settings that I want. So with all that in mind, if you're in the market for a 4K panel, then this is definitely not a hard panel to recommend. But there are a few things I would like to see changed or improved at this price point, or seen in a future revision. A height adjustable stand would have been nice, and maybe some manual controls for HDR, to really tweak your preference. And if you ever see a future revision of this monitor with the tweaks and changes I have mentioned, with maybe some FreeSync 2.0, I think it would have a pretty killer 4K monitor. And with all that being said, that is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully I have covered everything, and if you have any questions about anything, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Again, thanks to BenQ for sending us out for a review, and yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe and comment like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.